Well, thank you, Brad and Tara, for uh, all the work that you've done in putting this together. It's, it's a great opportunity to showcase what, what we have to offer in this state. As we all know, Mother Nature has been extra generous to Utah. And consequently, we have a wonderful outdoor recreation uh, opportunity industry that generates over $800 million a year of revenue to this state. Uh, one of the things that we find as we talk to companies who are interested in coming here is that they're attracted by the quality of life that we have. And it really is a, a great selling point. And these companies and their employees are, are looking at these mountains. They see the ski resorts. They see the beauty of our canyons in southern Utah. They see all of these things, and it is very appealing to them. Uh, I'm an avid outdoorsman. I love to... I love to backpack, I love to snowshoe, ski, golf, bike. Uh, if I could have my druthers, I would be outdoors all the time doing fun things. Um, and Jerry, I am a card-carrying member of REI. In fact, my wife has a restraining order against me going there too often, but I still sneak in and do what I can to, uh, <laughs> to uh, help the economy here in our state. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, the 17th governor of Utah, who himself is a great outdoors person. Uh, he's a, a very good and avid golfer, an excellent tennis player. He's been a skier, and it is because of his leadership that we have this outdoor recreation office, and uh, we're very fortunate to have him leading our state and, uh, and leading out on these issues. So it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Governor Gary Herbert, the 17th governor of the state of Utah. Well, thank you, Val, and welcome to all of you this morning. I'm honored to be here with you today as we talk a little bit about Utah and our outdoor recreation opportunities. Um, I do appreciate all who have uh, worked hard to put this together, this event. It's uh, our second annual uh, Outdoor Recreation Summit and uh, getting bigger and better each year. Uh, we thank all those uh, who are part of it. I'm just looking over the program. It's going to be a wonderful event here today. I just was looking too at they had the uh, kind of a shot of uh, some of southern Utah as beautiful scenery. And I'll note this one example of uh, people really do appreciate the scenery of Utah. Uh, the, you probably realize or remember that about a year ago or so they filmed a movie in southern Utah called The Lone Ranger with uh, Army Hammer and Johnny Depp playing the role of Tonto and Army Hammer is the Lone Ranger. But as we uh, have movies that come here occasionally, this one was filmed in, in not only Utah but in other states also, uh, some of the the events that took place in that movie. But they liked Utah's scenery so much that through the modern miracle of animation and technology, they would superimpose on the backdrop Utah scenery while they're doing scenes in other states. I won't say what states they were doing it, but they liked the scenery of Utah so much that they just kept that as part of the backdrop even though they were filming in other states. An example of what we have to offer here and the variety and the diversity of our scenery is quite unique in the state of Utah compared to other states. All of America is beautiful. I'm, I'm a proud American, but I'm grateful to be in Utah where we have uh, some really great advantages that are taking place here. Um, I appreciate, too, Brad Peterson's work. Uh, we, uh, we started this event here uh, under Brad's leadership and Val Hale, who's really taken the role of making sure that we have economic opportunity in all of its forms here in the state of Utah and kept that as our focus. And uh, with Brad at the helm of our outdoor recreation office, you know, we've been able to do some wonderful things. Uh, and uh, I, I see significant growth. I'll talk about that maybe in a minute as far as what we see happening economically in our state. But I appreciate Brad's role and what he's doing and for Val Hale. It's nice to have Jerry uh, Stritsky here too, uh, the head of REI. I happen to have the opportunity to work with his former boss, uh, Sally Jewell, who now is the Secretary of Interior uh, in the Obama administration, and I've had a great relationship with Sally. Uh, some of you may remember that about 17 months ago, with some of the dysfunctionality that happens in Washington, D.C., 
uh, that we had a shutdown of our national parks. I think in large part because of the good relationship that I had with the Secretary Jewell, but also because of her business background and understanding the ramifications that would ha have on <coughs> the rural economy of Utah and those people who are involved in the outdoor recreation business and all of its different uh, uh, possibilities that they were going to hurt economically. And so working with her, we were able to, as you recall, open up those national parks and, and really save the economy for the southern part of Utah in particular. And I appreciate Sally Jewell and her business background and REI uh, for helping with that effort. So it'll be great to hear from, from Sally here coming up. Last but not least, let me just thank all the sponsors. <coughs> I know these things don't just happen by accident. It really is, uh, for many of you, just a, a, a love of the, of the outdoors, the outdoor recreation, and your desire to see us have opportunity for the rising generations to come after us to have the same kind of outdoor recreational potential and opportunities that we've had and enjoyed. And, and so I appreciate you stepping forward and helping out with those areas. Now, speaking about uh, recreation, uh, I did get the memo on the dress, you know, a little more casual, but I've been involved in some indoor recreation right now with the legislature. And uh, I've got to go back up to the hill and, and see if we can't uh, work together up there to keep the state on track. Um, I know that the humorous Dave Barry said that camping is nature's way of promoting the motel business. And uh, I'm sure there's not people here that believe that, but uh, as you get older, I know my father used to say to me that for him anymore, uh, roughing it was staying at the Motel 6. You know, and he was raised on a farm up in Idaho and a hunter, fisherman, camper, hiker. Uh, the Herbert household, uh, we spent a lot of time outdoors and uh, riding horses. I take an annual horseback ride up above Heber Valley, uh, just uh, very conveniently close, and uh, spend uh, usually a Saturday day uh, riding with some friends of mine, and I enjoy doing that. We always have our annual family uh, uh, reunion up at Bear Lake, where we do some water skiing and fishing, and, and enjoy being at that beautiful side of uh, Utah. We also have an annual vacation down to Fish Lake, where it's uh, uh, fishing is the main hobby there and, uh, and uh, spending uh, you know three or four days with our families. Uh, I, I appreciate the fact that Utah has so much diversity for outdoor recreation. There's something there for everybody, whether it's uh, skiing, whether that's uh, snow or water skiing, hiking, camping, fishing, hunting, four-wheeling, uh, you know, just great opportunities out there for uh, anybody who's looking for some outdoor activity. As Val uh, mentioned, uh, I'm partial to what I call government, government official leadership forums, which the acronym for that, as you can tell you, was one of my favorite things to do outdoors. And, uh, and I appreciate the fact that we have so much diversity here in the state of Utah. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I would say not only do we have the opportunity because we have been blessed with a lot of great scenery and outdoor recreational opportunities, but the diversification that we have here is unique. It's not all the same. There is something that for everybody. And we've talked about the fact that you can actually w uh, snow ski in the morning. Y you could do that today in Utah. You could snow ski and you could golf in the afternoon. And uh, it's, it is convenient. Uh, it's, uh, I call it convenient seclusion. It doesn't take you long to get to where you want to be and be kind of away from the masses and from the urbanized parts of our state and, and to be in some real uh, secluded settings. Um, comedian Steve Wright quipped once, anywhere is within walking distance if you've got the time. And uh, the nice thing is that uh, you can walk or you don't need to walk. We had a governor, his name was Haley Barber once, that said, Gary, I hear that you can fly into Salt Lake International Airport and be up skiing in 45 minutes. I have a hard time believing that. So we said, will you fly in and we'll make sure it happens. And uh, sure enough, uh, he flew in. We have an event, in fact, uh, every March, it'll be coming up this weekend where we have a number of governors that come to the state. We get together up in Park City and have a lot of outdoor recreational opportunities for the governors and other corporate sponsors of our uh, or governor's organizations, whether it be the RGA or the NGA uh, or the WGA. And so they come in, they'll be coming in this weekend, but you can land at the airport and we can get you up on the slopes up in Deer Valley in 45 minutes. 
And I know Governor Barber was quite impressed with that, how convenient it was to be up there and skiing. Um, <clears throat> One of the great things that we see happening because of the leadership of Val Hale and uh, Vicki Varela of our Tourism and Travel and Brad uh, Peterson is we see that uh, we have a significant economic impact into our state. Our focus has been really on the economy here in Utah, and we've been named the most business-friendly state by Forbes magazine four times out of the last five years. U.S. Chamber of Commerce just named us for the second time in two years the most enterprising state in, in America. And that's led to some significant successes for us, particularly in the tourism and travel and the outdoor recreation business. Um, our outdoor recreation accounts for more than five billion of our state's annual seven and a half billion tourism industry. So tourism and travel is, is really tilted towards outdoor recreation. Uh, we have with our uh, mighty five parks uh, uh, marketing strategy, uh, we have now the majority of the people that come to our national parks are international visitors, uh, non-English speaking people that have discovered Utah a lot of it's uh, since the uh, post-2002 uh, Olympics of people have discovered Utah. But that promotion has been remarkable as we see people coming now from all over the world here to Utah. Uh, it creates 124,000 jobs for us in the state and generates over $1.2 billion in state and local taxes here this past year. So I, I can't overstate the economic impact that uh, outdoor recreation is having on our state with our tourism and travel efforts. Um, so variety and convenience are the, probably the two of the great uh, things we have to promote here in Utah. But also I, I want to thank again Brad Peterson for his efforts in raising the bar over what we've been doing in the past. Uh, you know, marketing, letting people know, having them become aware of what the opportunities and the possibilities are are significant uh, for our efforts here in the state of Utah. And just in the last uh, couple of years uh, with the State Outdoor Recreation Office, here's a, a list of some of the accomplishments in the past years. Our national parks, as I mentioned, have logged 7.2 million visits just in the last two years, which is up 13.7% over what we've done in the past. So uh, that's been a significant promotion. A number of our skier days here in 2014 totaled 4.2 million skier days, which is the third highest we've ever had on record. Um, the number of our outdoor recreation companies are moving uh, to Utah, is including some that Brad has mentioned before. Uh, again, the movement not only for just enjoying the outdoor recreation, but for companies saying, I want to be where the action is, and moving their headquarters or starting their businesses here in Utah has been quite dramatic. Um, I would just tell you too uh, that this idea, I wish I could take credit for, the, for this idea of having an outdoor recreation office, but it came as part of our uh, meetings that we had here with the Outdoor Retailers Association and part of their uh, convention uh, and, uh, that they do twice a year here in, uh, in Salt Lake. And they posed to me as I was addressing the board of directors, they said, uh, Gary, you have a 10-year plan for energy, you have plans for education, you have these long-term uh, plans you've put in place for a lot of different areas. What are you doing for outdoor recreation? And it was a great question and a great comment because we were really not doing anything proactively, uh, at least at the level that we should have been doing. So my commitment to them is I'll be back in six months and I'll have a plan in place for you to uh, pr uh, take a look at and see if it sounds good to you. That's what led to our outdoor recreation office, and really, we're the only one, we're the first ones in America to do it, and I think we're still the only ones that have a, spe a specific outdoor recreation office. And it's really come from folks like yourselves saying to me, why don't you have one? What do we do to promote outdoor recreation in the state of Utah? And it's led to a significant focus that we haven't had before. We've dovetailed that together with the fact that, as I mentioned, we are a very business-friendly environment, uh, making sure that for the entrepreneur that uh, this is a great environment. Uh, competitive, low competitive taxes. We have regulation reform. We really try to empower the private sector, the entrepreneur, to, to have the opportunity to, to take that risk and, and with the opportunity to make reward and profit. And so Utah really 
I think is in many ways is helping focus on this segment of our economy in a, in a very successful way. Uh, it was mentioned, I think, by Brad uh, Vista Outdoor, which is a global designer and manufacturer of market of outdoor sports and recreations, a break off of ATK, a whole new niche marketplace for them, $2.3 billion in annual business, uh, virtually debt free, and uh, having them headquartered here in Utah is uh, a, a significant uh, benefit to us in Utah. And I think it's going to be a, b a significant benefit to Vista Outdoor uh, being headquartered in the most business friendly state in America. It's going to create uh, about 100 new jobs in the state of Utah, uh, $10 million capital investment in Utah, which is significant, and projected $6.7 million in uh, state tax revenues. Helps us pay the bills for the issues that we as a government need to be concerned with, whether it be you know, road building, education, health and human services. It really does come from the success of the economy and our outdoor recreational businesses are growing dramatically. I'll just mention a couple of examples here and, and sum up. Um, this happens a, a, a lot. I've had a lot of people that I get around the state say, let me tell you my story of why I'm here in Utah. And a lot of it has come from people coming here on some kind of vacation and discovering, you know, the mountains, uh, the Red Rock country, the lakes, the fishing, the camping, uh, the, the golf meccas that we have here, and say, I like the quality of life that we have here in Utah, and I want to bring my family and raise my family here. Some bring businesses or transfer their businesses from other locations. Some come here and start a business. Uh, Bryce Thatcher was so captivated by South western uh, Utah's Red Rocks and canyons several years ago that he decided he'd move to St. George and in order to survive, he said, I'm going to create my own business. Uh, it was not something he'd been doing before, but he wanted to come to Utah and how could he afford to do it? Well, I'm going to start my own business. His company was called Elite, uh, Elite Creators, which packs hydrogen packs and ultra, for ultra distance runners and camera equipment for adventure photographers. He now has 28 people in his employ down in St. George. Uh, his uh, St. George location has been a, a great place to attract uh, potential clients and uh, customers uh, for international distributors that come there, world-class athletes who come there, fly in, train in that area, visit our uh, Zions Park or Snow Canyon, other recreational uh, opportunities that are in that uh, area of St. George. And we have a new business that's been born because of somebody's love and attraction for the great state of Utah and its scenery. Uh, the good news for all of us, too, is that there's a multiplier effect. So when somebody like uh, Bryce starts a company, for every dollar that he spends or infuses into the economy, the ripple effect tells us we'll have about four other dollars that will ripple through the economy. Somebody buys, uh, you know, a 500 dollar set of skis, next thing you know they're buying ski passes, they're spending a week up on the slopes, uh, eating out at restaurants, uh, uh, spending time and uh, buying other uh, uh, accessories that go with their ski equipment and that four to one ratio that rolls through the economy is a significant benefit and a shot in the arm for our economy as it continues to grow and expand. Kobe Darling is another example who uh, came to Summit County up in the Park City area and uh, again, uh, was so enamored with the scenery and the ski opportunities up there that he decided to bring his own company, which was called Skull Candy, uh, one of the world's leading audio and gaming uh, headphone designers and distributors. He said, I'm going to bring my company and bring it to Park City where I want to stay. Uh, again, that kind of movement is taking place in significant ways as people discover Utah is only a great place to recreate, but a great place to do business. So that marriage of the two aspects of outdoor recreation is paying off significant dividends to uh, the state of Utah. Uh, let me just mention a couple of other things. <clears throat> we are a fast growing state, uh, probably the third or fourth fastest growing state in America today. It is because of great quality of life, outdoor recreation being a big part of the quality of life that we talk about here and economic opportunity. People come here because they have jobs and they like the quality of life and the opportunities that are presented there to us, uh, to them. Uh, we also need to then have a responsibility. I refer to us as being good stewards of the earth. Uh, we have sometimes differences of opinion as far as you know what's supposed to take place with our public lands, 
but our goal in our administration with our team is to make sure we have that appropriate balance that allows us, in fact, to protect those iconic uh, vistas and venues that we have in the state, let uh, our ranchers and farmers have access to uh, under the Taylor Grazing Act and others that allows them to work the, on the BLM land, and make sure that we can balance that uh, opportunity uh, with nature and, and uh, live in harmony together. Uh, I've put over our Balanced Resource Council, I don't so see Ted here today, but uh, Alan here, Alan Matheson's helping us with our uh, need to be good stewards of the earth and our environmental concerns. Ted Wilson, a, a former mayor of Salt Lake City and one of the lead in environmental uh, in our state, a backpacker extraordinaire. Uh, he's uh, really a, a, a person who spent a lot of time in the outdoors and camping and hiking has helped us try to strike the appropriate balance in this fast-growing state. We know that our population in Utah is uh, scheduled to double by 2060. We have some unique challenges going forward with infrastructure needs, uh, uh, with our water needs that we need to have here in the state of Utah to accommodate that growth. And so being a good steward of the earth and managing our lands appropriately is high on the list of our efforts. Consequently, we're part of what's called the Mountain Accord, which has uh, uh, been working for the number, uh, last number of months, uh, bringing together different working groups, people at different uh, points of view and stakeholders, in an extensive analysis of our central Wasatch Mountains here uh, to make sure that we have at least an understanding of the impact that we're having on those recreational areas, uh, to make sure that we uh, look at the goals and designs that we have for this region when it comes to the environment when it comes to recreation, when it comes to transportation, uh, air quality issues, uh, and the economy. And uh, we've been able to refine and have a proposed blueprint for the future of the Wasatch here. And uh, our desire is to make sure that the public has an opportunity to weigh in and, and give their own input so that we hear from the grassroots and make sure that we're getting the right blueprint for us to implement. And uh, that uh, is available for public comment through March 16th for anybody who'd like to weigh in on that. And uh, they're happy to give input and take input as we uh, finish up the blueprint and then we'll move to the next stave, stage of implementation of, of that effort. Uh, also, I just would want to mention, you know, public lands has been a big issue for us here in the state. It, uh, under the charter, the Bureau of Land Management, it's a multiple use charter, which means that these public lands should be used for farming, ranching, outdoor recreation, natural resource development, energy, uh, all those things working together. Our desire really is to find the, the appropriate balance point for those kinds of things. And uh, we are a public land state. I'll state it unequivocally, we will always be a public land state. How we manage those lands to their optimal level is kind of the debate that we have going on, and we invite everybody to engage in that discussion. I want to recognize our Congressman Rob Bishop and Congressman Jason Chaffetz for putting forward what we call the Public Land Initiative, which is designed to resolve some of the disputes that we've had over 500 different meetings now with all stakeholders, from business and civic leaders to the, those involved in industry and natural resource, uh, the environmental community to see if we can't find uh, a way to, in fact, protect the iconic vistas and venues we have, allow for our farmers and ranchers to access their water and their grazing rights, and also develop some of our natural resources in an appropriate and responsible way. Uh, this uh, initiative is going to, I think, come forward in Congress this uh, year. Uh, it'll take care of bringing balance to 18 million acres of Utah. And again, we'd encourage you to, in fact, uh, give input to the congressman and help us get this resolved. Uh, and I think we're on the right pathway to find the appropriate balance for uh, at least that portion of our public lands. Um, let me just conclude by quoting William Shakespeare. I know my staff hears me quote Shakespeare all the time. And William Shakespeare said this, one touch of nature makes the whole world kin. It really is what brings us together, it is the, the real estate that we have out there, the, the scenery, the landscape that we have, uh, Mother Nature. Uh, there is something about going outdoors. I know the Lieutenant Governor was mentioning earlier that he does walking meetings anymore outside of our Capitol building. We have a, a trail that's been put out around our Capitol building, and just getting out and talking about issues and walking around in the outdoors is a way to kind of get in harmony with each other 
and with nature. And I think it, uh, again, is an opportunity for us to, in fact, uh, have a greater appreciation for our surroundings. We have a responsibility in government to represent the, the people. We have responsibility to provide economic opportunities so jobs can be created in a free market situation. I see a lot of our booze out here, entrepreneurs and business people focusing on outdoor recreation. It is one of the best parts of our, uh, of our growing economy that's growing dramatically. When you see things growing at almost 14%, you know, something is going right in the state of Utah to see that kind of exp expansion taking place in our outdoor recreation uh, business. Uh, but at the end of the day, it really takes all of us working together. Uh, nobody has a corner on everything that's right. Uh, it really is a matter of us working together to find solutions to some of the challenges that we face in this state and are literally around the country when it comes to working with our public lands and the outdoor recreational opportunities. So I hope that we can all uh, work together. My pledge is to make sure we listen to you and, and to make sure that we're responding to your needs and concerns in an appropriate way. Uh, Val Hale, the former athletic director at Brigham Young University, would, would tell you that really the most successful teams he's seen in sports throughout his years have been those teams that, where the people really work together and pull together. And I believe that's the same thing with us here in outdoor recreation. It really is a team effort. Uh, we are all part of the same team, and we ought to try to make sure that we work together to have the, uh, the greatest amount of success. I'm a little hokey about team and the concept of team. I use the acronym T-E-A-M uh, to mean not only team, but together everyone achieves more. So I'm looking forward to working with you. I know you've got a great uh, uh, conference here at this Outdoor Recreation Summit. We appreciate your attendance and your involvement uh, and your help in making uh, Utah such an outdoor recreation mecca. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor. It's great to hear from you, and, uh, and, and especially for your support. I mean, really, that's what makes the state of Utah such a great place to live and to, to recreate and to uh, continue to just fulfill our dreams out there.